So Gary, you were here in 2015 last year at the Tradewise Gibraltar Chess Festival. You won it convincingly, decisively, and now you're back in 2016. How has the year been for you, chess-wise, personally? Tell us a little bit about this journey in the middle. 2015 was a very good year for me overall. Um, I started here with, uh, with a win, of course, last year here in Gibraltar, and I uh, won, won a tournament in Zurich, won the U.S. Championship. I, I think I basically started off winning or tying for first in the first four or five events that I played last year, so it was a very good start. And then kind of around the middle of the year, I started playing a little bit less. There just weren't a lot of tournaments to compete in. And, um, and so the second half wasn't quite as good. I still had some decent results. Um, I, I won this tournament in Vegas. I think you were there as well, the Millionaire Chess. Um, the end didn't quite go as well as I would have liked, but still uh, overall, when all was said and done, by the end of the year, I picked up maybe nine or 10 points. Um, and at some point, maybe in June or July, I picked up something like 30 or 35 points. So kind of the last like, one or two tournaments that I played in kind of obscured the overall uh, picture. But, but that being said, it was still uh, quite good for me. So I, I had a good year. And there's been a lot of talk about how in the last year or so, your outlook towards the game and your psychology part of it especially has, has evolved a lot and changed a lot. Would you give us a little bit of your take on that? I'm not, uh, in a way, a hopeless romantic. I think a lot of people, when you talk to them about chess, they tend to have this, uh, feel like there's something special to the game or there's something, you know, really different. I think when you look at a lot of top players, it's more about being pragmatic and understanding that when you get opportunities, you try and take advantage of them. But for the most part, it's not, you're not going to have these brilliancies or uh, the, these games that, that, you, that, you know, growing up at least, uh, I looked at a lot. I think like some of the games I looked at of the, of the old players, uh, you know, from the 1800s up until probably even Tal or Spask, there was, there was a lot of creativity in some of, these, some of the games and a lot of the players as well. Um, but nowadays, it's a lot less of that, and it's much more about just simply trying to uh, get positions that you can play. And so because of that, it's, it's mostly about being practical and pragmatic than, uh, than, than you know, just trying to find something really interesting and uh, just, just play a great game. So would you say earlier you were always trying to make chess into something more beautiful than... Yeah, I, I think a lot of people at least, if you, if you were to ask them, um, growing up certainly you, you have a view that it's very, um, it's very beautiful, there's, there's, there's a lot to it. Um, and I think now, especially as I get a bit older and I've been playing for so long, uh, my, my view has shifted. It's, it's more about trying to optimize uh, and get the, the best result as opposed to trying to play the most interesting chess. Hey Gary, now last year you told us coming back to Gibraltar in this tournament that the one person that you were looking forward to playing was Topolo. What about this year? I don't, I, maybe I didn't mention this, but there was also one other player I wanted to play. I think at the end I mentioned um, that I was unhappy that, that uh, David Howell didn't win his last round game because I, I, wanted, I wanted to play him in a playoff so I could beat him and make up for the, for the draw that uh, he, he, got, he got against me in I think round seven it was last year. So. Uh, I think I think he's going to be here. Maybe, maybe not, but uh, assuming he is, I wouldn't mind playing him. Otherwise, uh, I think just in general, it would be nice to play against some of the top guys like Vichy um, or Maxim, because Maxim especially is a very creative player. Tends to come to all these turns very well prepared, and he, he plays uh, he plays a style of chess that I think is in some ways missing from the top level of the game these days. You said something really interesting. So it's uh, clearly um, you don't forget easy, but. Uh, if you were to play, David is going to be here. And would that play in your mind what happened last year when you're playing against David? Would that give you, do you think that would make you uh, feel that you have to go that extra mile in this game? Not really. I mean, uh, that's another thing with chess. It's very important to uh, remember, but also in a way to forget in that when you're playing, playing a game, you kind of have to be focused on the game itself as opposed to thinking about what happened in the past or what's going to happen in the future. It's, mo it's all about being uh, in the present. So. Um, certainly, I'll, I mean, at least before the game, I'll think about during the game, it, it definitely won't, won't be at the forefront of what I'm thinking about. And what about this attraction with this open tournament format that is suddenly there with all you top elite players? Uh, this year, we've also got Wishy, who's playing here, and 
Um, there's this whole movement where you know it's shifting from just the round robin to being open to playing these tournaments. Why do you think this is happening? I think there are a couple of reasons. I think first of all, it's much more economical for organizers and sponsors uh, when you have open tournaments as opposed to closed tournaments for for many reasons. First of all, I think the cost is much lower. But secondly, and probably more importantly, you have so many more players that you have a much wider variety in the games and the positions that you reach. Whereas when you have tournaments with maybe ten players very often you're going to have the same sorts of openings and you're going to have a lot more draws. Um, in open tournaments when you have so many different players who, who play all different styles, they're going to have more decisive games. It's just, I think, more interesting for the spectators. And what about the unpredictability factor of who you're playing against, not having any idea, not being in your comfort zone when it comes to opening? Is that something that bothers a top player, this feeling of almost wanting to, having to win on demand at times? Well, I, I think for me it's a bit easier because I, I grew up with this system. Um, for me, growing up, I played pretty much exclusively in opens until I was maybe uh, 2,700 strength. So for me, I mean, obviously I've been at been you know the top level for some time now, so I'm, I've gotten used to preparing uh, before games and you know even months in advance. But with that being said, uh, I, I don't mind playing opens because there is a level of unpredictability, and for the most part. Um, I do prefer this, the sort of chess where you have less opening preparation. It's more about just going to the board and playing well. And uh, I know also that, but I'm pretty sure almost any any top level European player you would ask, someone like Ma Maxime, for example, or uh, or some some of these other guys like Kramnik, they would say they hate it just because they're so used to playing this one game a day, you know, where you're always prepared. And and you know, of course, it, here it's only one game a day, unlike in the U.S. where it used to be two. But that being said, the level of preparation is a bit lower, but still, uh, I, I prefer that because I think that's a bit more of the, the pure style. Of pure That's chess you know, in its pure form, uh, where people go to the board and they play, and they have some preparation, but they're not completely prepared the way that they are in, uh, in these closed events where you have lots of, lots of time to prepare. From Gibraltar, you're going to be uh, going to the candidates. That's your next big event. One of the, I, mean, I have Zurich after this. Like, sorry, like, Zurich like and then off, yeah. candidates is going to be a completely different format. And obviously, mm -hmm. that's one of the most important events of the year. How, do, how would you say that a tournament, an open tournament like Gibraltar, would go into your journey for your preparation for this event or these few um, months? Obviously, I want to do well here, but I, but I think the main thing is, is because there's such a importance being placed on this tournament, you know, the Candace tournament in March, um, it's just very important to stay sharp, play some chess, and, and, and be ready. Because if you, if you don't play before that tournament, let's say I were to not play here and to not play in Zurich, um, that basically would be something like three months where I, I wouldn't have played a game of, game of actual chess. Sure, I've been preparing, but... Uh, there's no, there's nothing that's quite the same as playing because uh, it's, it's just if if you're not if you're not used to playing and you haven't played for a while and you're going to be a little bit rusty and it's going to feel a little bit strange. So you were here in 2008 when you won it, in 2015 when you won it, and now you're back in 2016. What is it that makes you come back here all the time besides the winning uh, part of it? First of all, as as an American, um, there's a certain cultural sense sense of understanding or comfort that I feel here because there are, there are a lot of. Uh, a lot of Brits, um, and, and they're definitely the closest thing to Americans, I would say. But also, it's just the location as well. Here in Gibraltar, um, the weather's not always perfect, but uh, for the most part, you get quite a few sunny days, and uh, the weather is more mild. It's a milder climate here, and um, compared to some other tournaments at the same time of year, uh, it's, it's just much more preferable. Over these years, when you've been in Gibraltar so many times, have you seen the tournament grow or evolve over time? It's just amazing. So that that first year, the first years that I was playing here, it was just all upstairs and in like a back room on the same floor. Now uh, it's just this entire hotel that that uh, is filled with chess players. So I think it's really great to see where it's gone, and uh, they they do a great job. And I think every year it's it just keeps improving. And what about a big part of this tournament, like you said, which has also grown a lot over the years, is the social aspect of it. They've got the battle mm -hmm. of the sexes, they've got all these blitz events. Uh, do you personally enjoy taking part in them? I used to enjoy the social part of it more. I mean, especially when I won here in 2008. Uh, that, was, that was one of the highlights. Of course, as I've gotten a bit stronger and, and, and into the elite level a bit more, um, it's much more serious than it used to be on, on one hand. But yeah, just the fact that they have have all these uh, different different events for for everyone from the strong amateur players you know to up to the professionals I think it just provides a great atmosphere and I think that's one of the biggest uh, attractions for for someone who who wants to come and just just play one or two of these major tournaments every year because there there are quite a few people I know even back in New York who are coming to this event because uh, because of the atmosphere and all these different things that are going on here so it's it's quite special absolutely thank you and all the yeah. best